Um, and if we thought, uh, Rob, that Fabregas was a saga, what about Carlos Tevez um, at City? Um, we thought he was going. No, he isn't. He wants to go. No, he doesn't. He wants to be near his family. Does he? And also, there's um, so many other strikers at the club. Um, something has to give. Well, I'll just contrast and compare the, the Tevez and, and, and Fabregas. And I know Henry's trying to stoke up this thing about Fabregas being a, a, a bad boy and stuff and being disrespectful, but... It, <laughs> And I see there's a classic here, I, I haven't shown it, but on the back of, I think it's the people, Stan Collymore, mm -hmm. saying that Fabregas is a stinking fish. Yeah, stinking I held the, it up, stinking yeah. The, yeah, he did, stinking yeah. the place out. I mean, as if we're going to take um, lessons from Stan Collymore and I had to be a model professional and I had to behave at a football club. <laughs> I mean, I just, just, just as an aside. How is come back to Fabregas? No, I just, no, no, I just, no, I just no, no it's OK, we're comparing, we're but comparing. Co contrast and compare, will you please listen, pay yeah. attention. <laughs> So then we get to Tevez, said, who <laughs> has disrespected <laughs> his team, disrespected his manager, disrespected the city in which he lives, disrespected the country in which he earns a, a living. And, um, you know, he, we know that this particular individual, because of the way uh, he's owned, is, 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 in inverted commas, a, what you could call a, a mercenary footballer. That, that he is owned by people who, never who, make, those. who make money from him moving on and uh, from getting in fabulous salaries around the place. So, um, whereas it's a completely different scenario, to me, Tevez is everything that's wrong with the modern game, and if that's the way we're going, where people buy and sell players as individuals rather than their own by the clubs, then, and I think it probably is, then we're going to get far more of this. Um, we're going to have players who come in for a year, come in for two years, and then move on and kick up a stink to, to, to get out. And it just, the, t the whole Tevez thing leaves so this, a this nasty... This could be Tevez. Well, definitely Tevez. That, you know, I, I could understand somebody saying that, but the problem is when you when you, when you've got a. Uh, I, I I always try and. Well, I think we we'll probably talk about Joey Barton later on. Now, there's certain things that I did in my early career, in my early life, that I would never ever put myself on a platform to say, "Oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't," and, and occupy the whole moral ground because I think that would be hypocritical. Because I was a bit hot-headed when I was a kid, so I would never ever do that. So for somebody to go on the back page of a paper like Colin Moore there and, and try and preach about what loyalty to clubs and how you should behave as a professional, I think I think he should look at himself and say, "Am I the right person to stand up and say this?" So. Uh, but Tevez, okay. to, for me, the sooner he gets out of the Premier League, the better. A wonderful player. Um, he's been terrific from Manchester City. You can say that uh, in terms of what he's done on the pitch and how he's pulled them forward. But in terms I'm of... I'm going to bring Henry in now. In, but the fact, in, the so fact, no, now what, what, what I don't understand is now is not the right time to be leaving Manchester City. Fair enough. Ridiculous. Any time yeah. over the yeah. last sort of 25 Absolutely. years, as City fans will tell you, you know, all the sort of problems that they've had. Where is there's only two restaurants in Manchester. Where's, where's now? <laughs> well, I thought that was disrespectful, actually, because if you're actually, anyone who's been to Manchester, you know. It's if you think he is horrible, well, you don't like it. He can live in Alderley Edge and have a fantastic lifestyle, So, and there are nice anyone restaurants in Manchester. Anyone would think he lives in Moss Side. <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't. I mean, I'm sure he's got a lovely place there. I'm not sure that the uh, Manchester <laughs> Tourist Board have got anything to do with this. <laughs> but the, the point is, is that in terms of what is going on at Manchester City, why leave? Yes. You know, they are a rising because wave. Because he wants to be close to his family. No, it's because he's but, not earning enough money. Sorry, my, uh, look, grand even in my limited O-level geography, Milan is not particularly closer to Buenos Aires than Manchester. OK, maybe an hour's flight or whatever. But the, but the point is, it, but in terms of a footballing perspective, into Milan, fantastic club, great history. Milan is a great city to live in. The centre's quite nice, but in, you know, we're getting back to tourist boards, industrially, not particularly okay. pretty on the outside. Place, but in terms yeah. of, from a footballing perspective, the Premier League is better than Italian football at the moment. Manchester City are in the Champions League. He has got fans who adore him there. I just don't understand the logic. So what do they do with him? What do they do with Tevez? Well, I think he wants to go and they'll probably sell him. And I think they've got Aguero in, and I think what's going to be very interesting, Aguero apparently is on the, the bench later, but I think if he can click with Balotelli, and Balotelli sorts his head on and he's not allergic to bibs or grass or, or whatever, then I think those two can actually be a very good central um, striking uh, uh, combination. I think the person who actually misses out is, is Tevez, because this is the wrong time to be leaving yeah. Manchester City. Interesting. Well, I'd like, well, I'd like to see where he is going to go. How does, Ma how does Mancini, we say it's every year, but the, the squad grows, keep all his strikers happy. He can't, can he? Well, no, he can't. Tevez is going to and, and since he's been at the club, hasn't he? He's had a history of falling out with players who yeah. certainly are not playing. But I mean, I think you get that in any club, don't you? I mean, if you're not playing, then, then generally players are unhappy. But with Rancini, and, and he's, you know, he's had a few bust-ups, hasn't he, with Tevez as well. You know, have been well documented. 
you can't keep them all happy, can you? I mean, clearly Aguero has been brought in, hasn't he, to, to replace um, Tevez, yet Tevez is still on the books. And at the moment, you know, all there is is this talk about, about um, Inter Milan. There's talk about Real Madrid. Real Madrid won't go and buy him, not at that sort of price. And, and given the money he's earning, and, and as B said, you know, he's a, I, I think he is a mercenary. I think he is, I think this is more about money. I, I can't see this is about family. Yeah. You know, and uh, the, the problem is with Tevez is that the City fans love him. And, um, you know, they'll forgive no matter what he says. Is he, about being, is he city, being badly No matter how disrespectful he is. Is he being badly advised then? Well, yeah, I'd probably say so. I think he, he hangs off every word of Keir Jurapson, doesn't he? You know, um, I think because to, to Keir, 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 Keir Jurapson says, um, he says, out, you know, to pick up he asks how high, doesn't he? Why doesn't an agent say, hold on a minute, the city are just growing into something here, why do you want to leave? You know, well, he's in a couple of years. Well, I mean, and also Keir Jurapson's an enemy, enemy of a state at, at Manchester City, isn't he, as well? You know, but there's, there's some bad blood. City have come out and said some things about him. I mean, you know, he said things about City, you know. Keir Jurapson has a history of moving players on, doesn't he? Tevez is his major. West Ham. He's then got him a move to Manchester United, then Man City, where he's, he's rich and successful beyond his, beyond his wildest dreams. So you can understand Tevez taking a bit of notice of what Keir Jurapson says, surely. Yeah. Let's not forget he's an exceptional player. He is mean, a wonderful he's, player. He's in City, terms we're not of goals, the same in terms of the work rate. I, don't th I mean, in terms of last season, company was very good, De Jong, Silva and, and players like that. But Tevez was outstanding with the goals and the contribution as well. So I don't think anyone can, can question his contribution to I, I, last I season. I, I think it would be sad if he goes, but I, also, I think it would be particularly sad for him. I, would, I wouldn't disagree good with point. that, but I think, I I think that. other clubs are, are put off signing Tevez because of this. Yeah. I think clubs in general think he is a mercenary. Yeah. No. And and you know don't, they don't know how long he's going to be around. You know where, wherever he goes, yeah, if agree. he went to Inter Milan, if he went to Real Madrid, well after six months is he fed up? He wants to be near his family. He wants to move somewhere even closer. You know, yeah. Tevez has a bad reputation. No, I agree with that. Settling. The common denominator between the two clubs this summer has been uh, Schneider mm. at um, Milan um, at Inter. I'm sorry. Stories this morning saying City tried to hijack United's bid for him. Also in the Sunday Times, I think it's Duncan Castles has written, that both are put off by the amount of money that Schneider wants to come here. Well, I think... I'm surprised there's not been a, more of a stampede for, for Schneider because when it became obvious that uh, Inter Milan were prepared to do business, you look around, what is he, 27 years old? Yeah. He's right-footed, left-footed, he he's not bad in the air for a small guy. He can control a football match, he can play the pass, he can score the goal, can take, he scored a wonderful free kick last night. He, to me, he is the best uh, midfielder, playmaker around at the moment. Um, I was up at uh, Glasgow Rangers with Chelsea yesterday and I was talking to a few of the Chelsea people. Uh, and I was saying, why don't we go for Snyder? You're talking about paying 30 million quid for Luka Modric. And yeah, Modric is a good player. But if I had 30 million quid to spend, I'd, I'd send it Wesley Snyder's way. I think it, what he's achieved in the game, Luke won the, the, the Champions League, he played the World Cup final, he, I think he was World Football of the Year, European Football yeah. of the Year. He is a quality act. And if, you know, I can see Chelsea spending 30 million quid to put him in the team. See, I can see him in Manchester United, playing for Manchester United, making them a better team. I can see him at Man City making that. He, would, he is worth 30, 35 million quid of anybody's money. Yeah. The problem we've got is the wages. He's on family. I think he's the second he highest earner in Italy I just, behind I just, Ibrahimovic. I'll just, just read you this, this um, Sunday Times story. It says that he... Uh, they want £35 million for him. He's on £200,000 basic wage. And after-tax salary stands at £5.25 uh, £5 Yeah. Uh, and um, they're saying, the Sunday Times, that United Chief Executive David Gill has declared defeat in talks. That doesn't mean to say well, it's actually, off. Actually, he's on £250,000. Yeah. And they're also saying that City have looked at the package and, and even they've it's, it's, at it. It's, it's a big package because there's <coughs> a difference. In, in this country, I think they pay 50% tax. Now, I know there's offshore vehicles that you can use to sort of maybe get a ransom of that. But um, in Italy, I think it's all netto. And that's the, there's a, so then there's a massive difference between, you know, even matching the figures, you, you, when you take the tax off, uh, there's, there's a big shortfall. And that's what United, Man City, or anybody else who wants Snyder have got to come up with, whether it's in a signing on fee, image rights, or, or, or some sort of loyalty bonus or whatever. The other thing I think at United is Wayne Rooney has got some sort of agreement, whether it's written or clause in his contract, that he is the highest paid player. Right. So if he came in on this 200,000, then Rooney would have to be lifted up as well to that. So it, that makes it quite expensive for Manchester United as well, because it's not just paying for Snyder. Yeah, yeah. You've got to then bring Rooney up to the same level, I, th I, I believe. Th there's another big issue here, and without sort of turning this into a sort of financial times 
love it. <laughs> the, the pound against the euro has basically collapsed, as anyone yeah. who's been on holiday recently. And if he wants to be paid in euros, that obviously is going to make it, rather than 200,000, it's going to make it 250,000 yeah. because of the exchange rate. Yeah. But I actually think it's worth it. I actually think it's worth it. Do you, think, do you think Schneider will be playing in the Premier League at the, in, in, I um, hope so. by I hope the end so. of August? Because he is quality. No, no, do you think he will be? Do you think somebody will pay this kind of money? I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, th I think the clubs are rich enough to do it. Man City certainly. Manchester United probably. Chelsea uh, certainly. It's, um, it's an interesting one because they, they want him and they're not quite sure. I, 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 have, have I, I think... I think <coughs> Snyder set his heart on going to Man United. Yeah. Mm. From, from what I can gather and, and from people that I've spoken to in Holland and people that allegedly have spoken to him, that's where he wants to go. What is disappointing when we talk about this situation with money is, again, money is more important than playing football, isn't it? So Snyder's not prepared to take a, a cut in wages. He's not prepared to, to put his, his career before yeah. earning Why should he? big money. Because... The Italian league, I think, is, is so poor compared to the Premier League. And I think the Manchester, Ma Manchester United, United are, are, are a very, very big club yeah, under yeah. Mourinho. Yeah. So why didn't Mourinho take him? And he said that Mourinho was the best manager, best coach he'd ever worked under. You know? I don't know. So if he's, he's, he's such a great when, player. When Jose you know, e emailed me this morning, it. he didn't mention anything about Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Sorry, Henry. I, th I think if Schneider came over to England, whether to City, to Chelsea, or to Manchester United, he would absolutely love it because he's got that work rate, he's got that ability, he's also got that element of fantasy. You can see a pass which actually quite a few players in this league don't have. Yeah. And I think that special talent as, as Rob was suggesting I and mean, I voted for him as European but Football of the Year last year because I yeah. thought he was exceptional in the World Cup he was exceptional yeah. in the Champions League yeah. I just think he's one of those talents that would absolutely love it here I agree with your comparison with Modric I think Modric is a terrific player but Schneider is just that 5% we'll, we'll, we'll above talk about